Hey, um, I wanted to review stuff from uh, the 1st of August. Um, we talked about um, a reminder about uh, um, how 5-HT uh, in the hippocampus can increase the amount of BDNF. Um, this was from the Malberg study that we talked about on the 31st. Uh, and then that these newborn it increased in, by increasing the amount of BDNF, although that takes weeks, once that happens, we have an increase in the new neurons that stick around and that can lead to a bigger hippocampus, which helps to regulate and um, keep cortisol levels and stress levels from getting too high. So that can be protective for anxiety and depression. Um, we then discussed um, the two different alleles in um, uh, BDNF. Um, there's uh, one that's the normal allele or the valine allele, and then the other one is where the valine at number 66 is substituted with the methionine, so it's called Val66-MET. Um, and that version, the less common methionine version, is less effective at activating the BDNF receptors. So um, we would expect hippocampal neuron survival to be not as good. Um, in the fertile study, um, we talked about uh, the various aspects of this study, um, including how, um, uh, including how uh, the excess, uh, or rather the, the, the under-effective um, valine allele um, might lead to a smaller hippocampus. And there were two possibilities that we came up with. One is that the less active uh, valine allele might lead to a smaller hippocampus, and then that is that uh, happens with everybody with that allele, and then that means there's a higher risk of depression, and then those who are exposed to stress would have a, uh, would develop major depressive disorder, or, or uh, you know the uh, various aspects of the environment. Stress is really just one can contribute from risk to disease. The second possibility is that the the allele, the, the valine allele, increases the risk, but the small hippocampus only shows up in the people with stress. And so that means that it's only showing up with major depressive disorder. Um, and so it's only, um, uh, and so that makes it, uh, the small hippocampus becomes a disease marker. In both cases, the valine allele is a risk factor. There's no single genetic disease marker for depression. Um, but uh, the question is just whether the small hippocampus is for depression a risk factor or disease marker. So first of all, um, uh, so we're going to you know, measure various, uh, we're going to measure the size of hippocampus and also major depressive symptoms. Um, and, uh, and so um, first of all, um, we expect uh, in our first model, where this is a disease marker, or sorry, where this is a, uh, um, a, a risk factor, in our first model where the small hippocampus is a risk factor, then what we expect is People with the normal allele will have a large hippocampus. People with the other allele will have a small hippocampus. And um, the normal allele, um, even though it doesn't change hippocampus size to be exposed to stress, it does. It stress does increase the risk of depression. But then we would expect a higher rate, of, a higher relationship, a stronger relationship, where more stress leads to even more um, uh, hippocampal, or sorry, even more major depressive symptoms in those with the mutation. Um, in our second model, we expect the same thing, where the depressive symptoms increase faster as a function of stress, or uh, there's a greater, there's a stronger relationship between stress and symptoms. Um, but the different prediction is that we expect that the people with the, um, uh, the mutation who have low stress, um, if it's if small hippocampus is a disease marker, to have a normal-sized hippocampus. And then only once exposed to stress would we expect their hippocampus to get smaller. So the big difference between these is in the size of the hippocampus. In our risk factor situation, the hippocampus is already determined just by the genes, and then plus or minus stress determines whether somebody has major depressive disorder. In the case where the small hippocampus is a risk factor, or sorry, is a disease marker, then we expect that um, the hippocampus is the same in both genotypes without stress, but then when you add stress in, then you get symptoms as expected, but also a smaller hippocampus. And so what we found was this model B, that, the, um, that in major depressive disorder, as stress increases, people with the valine allele have smaller and smaller hippocampus. 
So that indicates that it is a disease marker for major depressive disorder. Um, we then talked about a different study involving PTSD and small hippocampal size. Um, in this case, the, um, uh, we didn't look at one particular gene, but rather at twins who have all genes in common with each other, pairs of twins. One twin went off to fight in war and was exposed to traumatic events. The other twin stayed home. And so the twin who stayed home, their hippocampus shouldn't change size, no matter how much uh, stress their, their, their brother at war was exposed to. Um, so first of all, um, whether it's a disease marker or a risk factor, we expect that um, the people with a small hippocampus are going to have lar higher PTSD symptoms, either because they have a higher risk or because their hippocampus shrank when they were exposed. And the people with large hippocampus have few symptoms um, because either their hippocampus stayed big, that's the disease marker situation, um, or their hippocampus was just already big, and that's why they didn't get the disease in the first place. Um, the interesting thing is looking at our twins. So if this is a biomarker, then we expect that the stay-home twins are going to have, since they were never exposed to the stress, no matter how bad their brother's PTSD is, their hippocampus should stay the same, should all be the same size. Um, but um, our stay-home twin, um, when, uh, uh, if, if they have a small hippocampus, then that indicates that, um, uh, th that, that gives us a clue that their brother's hippocampus was also small even before he went off to war. And then that is why that stress caused the, the, um, the, um, uh, increased chance. And so the small hippocampus became a, it counts as a risk factor. So in the Gilbertson study for PTSD, it seems that a small hippocampus is a risk factor. Um, we then did a little bit of a comparison between the two. Um, there are some differences. One is that the fertile study doesn't look at relatives, but rather it looks at one gene and just a group of people that have this particular um, uh, uh, uncommon allele versus controls. Um, and then in the uh, Gilbertson study, they were looking at identical twins. And so it may be, for example, that BDNF in particular, this BDNF mutation, um, just changes the way the brain responds to stress. Um, but then in, um, when you're looking at many different risk factor genes, which they didn't even measure how many they were looking at in the, in the fertile study, and in, in the Gilbertson study, um, but when you're looking at many different risk factor genes, then maybe those genes collectively can lead to small hippocampus even before somebody's uh, exposed to stress and then lead to a disease. Um, another very important difference is there are different diseases that we're looking at. So even though major depressive disorder and PTSD have a lot of things in common, as well as major depressive disorder and generalized anxiety disorder, um, it is po there are differences between the, the diseases, and it's certainly possible that a small hippocampus is a disease marker for major depressive disorder, but is just something that is a risk factor for post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, something that goes along with that is that the time of the stress was very different. In the um, fertile study, they looked at how at adult hippocampus, adult hippocampi, um, and me and measured with a questionnaire how much stress those individuals had during childhood. So in the fertile study, the stress happened during childhood, um, and then in the uh, Gilbertson study, the the traumatic event happened um, uh, as a young adult. And so it's very possible that during development stress can lead to shrinkage of the hippocampus in people with genetic risk. And then, and then so for, for people who have early childhood stress, a small hippocampus actually is a disease marker. But for people who have adult stress, their hippocampus size doesn't change very much. And so um, whatever size hippocampus you happen to have when you get to adulthood, that just really dictates your risk. Um, there are, of course, other possible ways to sort of reconcile and compare these studies. Um, of course, a very important similarity is both of them found a correlation between the size of the hippocampus and the disease itself.